Good morning, good afternoon to those of you that are joining us today. A uh, couple of comments up front regarding this uh, webinar that you'll hear about this morning. One is, uh, while the name statistics or the word statistics is mentioned in the title, uh, no uh, background in statistics will be necessary for understanding what I'm about to share with you this morning. What I am about to share with you this morning about lines of code uh, is something that has not been done before in industry, uh, to the best of my knowledge, in, in any kind of a format, nor published, nor with uh, statistical analysis run against that data. So what you will see will be unique. Uh, it should also be somewhat of a, a shock to a number of folks who rely so strongly on using lines of code for predicting and estimating. Uh, Michael noted that uh, PMM, PMI credits are available for uh, attending today's webinar and uh, for our folks out there that do project estimating in the software world using lines of code, uh, I might have a good excuse for those projects that don't come in on time and are over budget as historically been the charge against IT projects. The other thing that I would note is that uh, this article, uh, this webinar is based on, if you want to look at some of the underlying original data and statistics, certainly what I'll be sharing with you has been uh, updated since that time. But uh, the original information on this, if you Google crosstalk and you Google my name, I think you'll find an article out there on uh, statistical unreliability of lines of code and software measurement. So that would be an encouragement for you. And I believe I'm working with Michael on getting uh, that article republished in uh, CAI materials and format. Uh, Michael's uh, uh, bio for me was uh, very well done. I appreciate that. I would add that over the past couple of years, I, I have become a uh, SEI authorized CMMI intro instructor. For those of you in which that might carry some weight, uh, I also have several other certifications, but I, I don't want to dwell on that this morning. I'd really like to get with you into some of the meat of this topic. So here's basically an outline that you see in front of you this morning of what we will be looking at. We'll, be, we'll look quickly at words and numbers and uh, how accurate either of those really are in our cultures today. And I do say cultures because I realize we have a very culturally diverse audience. Uh, last time uh, we had uh, one of these webinars, at least. We had folks from over two dozen countries on six continents. I only hope that uh, we can be as helpful to folks uh, today. We're going to look at lines of code and the notion of backfiring and using average numbers, uh, which if they themselves are meaningless as lines of code, the averaging becomes meaningless and any kind of tr uh, transformation of those numbers uh, also becomes meaningless. We'll look at the challenge uh, that we've had in the past in terms of lines of code studies and measurements. <clears throat> we'll look at why size measures are actually important. We're going to look at variations within a language for a single program written several times and across languages. And if, in fact, it's not the counting approach in the past, we've uh, argued that it was the counter who introduced the variation in the process because they were really counting lines, uh, blank lines of code, well, obviously not blank lines of code, but blank lines as a line of code, and comments as lines of code. If they were counting those inconsistently, that would increase the variation in the line of code count. That makes sense. But what if that's not the case? And what if you can't even attribute the programmer level of knowledge as level of variation within a line of code count. I want to show you some numbers today that will perhaps uh, give you reason to rethink maybe where you stand on that. And I encourage you to stick with us and, and see that through. And then we will look at some brief statistical analysis of the data uh, as if uh, the intuitive data and the practical use of the data itself is not uh, overwhelming enough. So here are some words and numbers that uh, certainly uh, give us cause for ambiguity within our own societies. Uh, words like pretty soon, for those of you that have teenagers, I, I, I'm very sorry. I, I do want to advise you that your children will grow beyond the teenage years. 
But when you're trying to get a hold of them at night and you ask them, you know, how soon until they come home, and they say pretty soon, uh, th those are not reassuring words to a parent. And by the way, when a project lead asks a software engineer or a program manager asks that project leader how much longer until this project's done, pretty soon is not a really accurate answer. Uh, just a minute, another one of those ambiguous phrases, uh, asking uh, your spouse how long before dinner, and they tell you, well, just a minute, if you were to set your stopwatch, you could pretty much guarantee that it's not usually really a minute. We've got the toddler that says uh, to the, the, the parent watching them at the kiddie pool, come on in, the water is perfect, uh, not realizing that uh, maybe there's some... Uh, biological uh, releases that are increasing the temperature there in that water. All right, so really what is a small supernova? You hear the uh, uh, astrophysicists kind of describe that, and, and I'm not really sure if I can grasp what that means. The one that we see each and every day practically and does impact all of us is when you hear the weather uh, man, weather woman, giving you the weather report and saying it's going to be a partly cloudy or mostly cloudy day, I can understand partly and mostly. I think partly is less than mostly, but partly sunny and mostly sunny. When compared to partly cloudy and mostly cloudy, it's like pick one or the other. Why do we continue to hide the meaning of the words, even in our weather reports? What's a big Mini Cooper? Obviously, uh, uh, a question who has fuel economy uh, is important to, on all of our minds today. It kills me when I'm in a uh, hotel and I go into the restroom there and I see two bars of soap. One is facial soap and one is uh, for bath. Now I'm wondering if I ever used the bath soap on my face, what would happen and vice versa. Well, you know I'm being kind of silly here, but you kind of get the point. Of course, airlines come up, came up with a new measure of flight time. They treat it gate to gate. That make, gives them a higher uh, level of confidence they'll get you there, but also better statistics for reporting on-time delivery, right? Okay, uh, <clears throat> here are some numbers that we we'll probably deal with more closely on a day-to-day -day basis. How late is our project? Being able to put our finger on that's a question that deserves a good answer. What's our variance to budget today? Many financial folks have those numbers, but in the context of the work that's been performed, uh, the, the variance doesn't really give us a whole lot of insight. How about how much remains to be completed on the project? Well, we've got so many more programs, so many more lines of code, uh, so many modules, so many iterations. You know all the IT mumbo jumbo there, but the question is how long until the thing is done? Then, of course, we've got that question we get up front, how big is this project? Well, you know, what does big mean, and what does this mean, and what does project mean, for crying out loud, because big in my mind may be different than big in your mind. For instance, I know that many of the software activities we work here would all be seen as small in industry. And when we call something big, I have to remind folks that <clears throat> we don't really have anything big here, but it's, it's big in their context, right? And what constitutes the project? Is it the writing of the software? Is it the installation? Is it the delivery? It's the uh, improvement and re-engineering of the whole business process on the front end. Is it the aftermath and its cleanup? So what constitutes even the project? So the point is, we got enough ambiguity in the world today, and uh, we want to try to minimize that. We want to talk about how to do that. We want to start by looking at the notion of what uh, a line of code is and some definitions that uh, are in the, uh, certainly in circulation, certainly uh, in, in publications. And this first one comes from Capers Jones. Capers, I must admit, he's not real big on lines of code, as you're going to see from some of these definitions and descriptions of lines of code. Uh, however, I think he's fair when it comes to uh, descriptions of lines.